there's this amazing system at Google called Lunch Ninjas. It's an internal tool where they match you with a random Googler who also wants to have lunch with a stranger. It was one of the underutilized perks of Google. You get to talk to someone smart, you get to find out what interesting things they're working on, you get to pick their brains all over free lunch. But the problem is, they can end up being a dot. If you don't really vibe, then it ends up being very superficial, right? My name's Vicky, I work at YouTube. What about you? Which department? What's a project you guys are working on? No one's excited talking about these things and it's really hard to extract their wisdom, their experience, how they view life. What do they know that I don't know? Of course, I wasn't going to let go of this precious time, precious opportunity. I wasn't going to sit through a grueling one hour of awkward pauses and just small talk and questions. So here are my three top tips for always knowing what to say in a conversation with a stranger and be able to extract the interesting nuggets that someone else has. Number one is throw in the unexpected fast. What we don't want to do is signal to the other person that this is just going to be one of those not so memorable conversations. We don't want to start with, what's your name? How are you doing? What are you working on? Instead, we want to get to unexpected questions fast. You know, we can still do the pleasantries, right? I can say, I'm Vicky, you know, they say I'm Bob, but I can immediately say, how's it going today? Is it busy, right? You can start to add a little bit of color, a little bit of emotion, and maybe you get lucky. And they say, oh my God, you know, it's a nightmare today. I'm working on these big AI projects. GPT is kicking our ass or something like that. And you know, they give you materials to expand on over your conversation together. But even if they don't give you anything, and most people don't, they say, yeah, I was okay today. You know, not much going on. Then you can still go in with your unexpected question, which is, can I ask you a random question? Now, this is really my favorite question because I have 100% not had anyone who told me, no, you cannot ask me a random question. Everyone is open to a random question, which then I follow up with, what would you do if you have three weeks to travel the world? Expenses, not really a problem. You know, your vacation time is already booked in. How would you plan your three weeks? This is indeed a random question, but I've already told them it's random and they said it was okay. You will not imagine how much of a gold mine this question brings. With just this one question, we can go on for an hour because some people will immediately give you an idea because they've thought about this before. You know, they give you their top countries, they have a list, you can definitely expand on that. If they give you countries, which cities would you like to go? Or why are you interested in those places? Have you been there before? There are millions of questions you can ask just with their interest in a few countries. Some people might actually tell you, oh, you know what, if I had three weeks, I wouldn't go traveling. Also very interesting. They don't think the same. Traveling is not high value to them. They're interested in something else. Perfect moment to find out why, you know, what drives them, what's interesting for them. And you, maybe you find out, you know, their kids have something big coming up. Okay, let's go deeper. Or they've got a pet so they can't travel. Now they might answer your question with a question. They ask you, well, what are you interested in? These are great because one, you can answer those questions and that will carry the conversations forward. That's easy. Plus by them asking those questions, you know in their thought process these things are important. So once you finish sharing your stuff, you can also ask them back. Oh, what about you? Where would you like to go? What are your criteria for picking places to go? That already, as you can imagine, the conversation could go on forever. And of course, you don't always have to ask about travel, but the idea is the question needs to do three things. The first one is it's emotionally charged. This one is positively charged. We are bringing in travel. We're bringing in three weeks of free time. We're bringing in money is not really a problem. That means people get so giddy, so excited, right? There are so many emotions attached to having money, having time, having new possibilities. Second crucial thing is the question indirectly asks about value. We're bringing out time and money, very limited resources that most people want more of. How would they spend it? What do they think about these? Do they get it often? How, how much do you value each of these things? That opens up a whole world of topics that you can get deep into quickly. And the third element of this question is that it uses what and how. This is actually a coaching trick I learned while improving my facilitation skills. I run Da Vinci cafes and we ask strangers deep questions all the time. And so the idea is out of the five W one H, who, what, where, when, why, and how, you get a spectrum of answers. On the one end, really quick answers that are logistical, pretty dry. These typically come from who, when, and where questions. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have questions that elicit really personal, really sensitive, deep, 
deep responses. And these come from why questions. But the problem for these two with strangers is one, the who, where, and when questions don't give that much context. And the why question can get really sensitive. People can feel very defensive of why are you asking me these personal questions? Why do I need to justify myself? And so the sweet spot is in the what and how. On the topic of coaching techniques, the second thing that really helped me always have something to say is to rephrase what's important to the other person. The most cringe thing I did before was whenever someone told me an answer to a question, I would say, oh, interesting, or oh, yeah, nice, which of course doesn't bode well for a conversation because the other person will most likely feel like, oh, okay, you have nothing to say to my long spiel about something so personal, so I'm not going to share anymore. Instead, let's change that by rephrasing what we heard that we think is important for the other person. Let's use that travel example again. Say Bob said, if I had the time, I would go to the tallest mountain on every continent. I can repeat what I think is important to them. So maybe I say, oh, challenging yourself physically is important to you. And they can say, oh my God, that's exactly it. You really get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's because since I was a kid, blah, blah, blah. And they tell you this personal story, which is great, right? Because you get to know a bit more about what motivates them, the context around their answer. Or they could say, oh no, it's actually not about that. It was because I had this geography class and we mentioned all of these mountains in a quiz. And ever since then, I wanted to go. Oh. So it's more like an innocent childhood dream come true. Again, I'm rephrasing what I think is important to them and they can tell me their thoughts. They can give me more context about what they're thinking, who they are. The idea is not try to be right about who they are. The idea is just give them something to bounce off of so they can tell you more. They can decide the direction of where they want to go. Because once you do that, there will be so many more opportunities that open up and you get to know the person really quickly. And once we've done that, we can do number three, which is offer my own stories. This one might sound like a controversial one because a lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't talk about yourself. You know, you should be interested in the other person. But the first two points already, we were interested in them. And once they've shared so many things about them, we don't want it to feel like, oh, this is just an extraction mission, right? I'm going to get as much out of you as possible and not share anything about me. In the end, we want to have a great conversation and offer what we have. Maybe it's they talked about, oh yeah, my childhood dream. You know, I had that geography class and I can share something on mine, you know, oh yeah, I had this great biology teacher who made it so interesting that mitochondria is actually one of my favorite words. Just something, something small like that. And they have now opportunities to find out more about you, right? Maybe it's they love mitochondria too. Maybe it's, you know, that favorite teacher, the qualities have something in, in common. This is in the end a conversation and we don't always have to be the one who's listening. We can try to resonate and share what we have so we can enrich the conversation further. One hour will pass in a blink of an eye and you'll feel like at the end of the conversation that you've known each other for ages because these techniques are designed so that you learn something new about the other person or about yourself. These get you thinking and those are the most rewarding conversations. And if you want to learn more about communications, check out this video here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.